Hello, so this is going to be my video tutorial of launching the Debris Mark Combo 4. Um, uh, it's now 4 instead of 3. The only difference is I had to upgrade the engines on these guys. For some reason it didn't want to deorbit properly, so I put bigger, heavier, more powerful engines on to guarantee it gets the job done. But anyways, same ship as otherwise, so let's launch it. Now one key thing to note about this ship is it is extremely hard to fly um, only if you use autopilot or advanced SAS. If you don't, it should be a pretty big easy breeze to uh, fly. Not too hard at all. So here we go. Yep, so it's pretty easy to fly. You have to turn on precise control and you're going to want to have it tilted because it doesn't like to uh, fly perfectly up and down. Um, the reason why you can't use advanced SAS or uh, any sort of autopilot is they tend to overcorrect too much and this rocket is a big wobbly piece of fire waiting to happen. And so you have to control it with a very precise minimalistic movements and you're going to want to be at a tilt. Um, it doesn't like to fly straight up, I think it's because of how long the rocket is, but if you have it on a tilt it works out just fine. So you just leave it at a little tilt. It's not as efficient, you want to dev devote more of your delta V to uh, going directly up but it's good enough. Alright, so solid rocket boosters are done and uh, they drop off, got parachutes. This whole thing has parachutes. Everything should survive. Um, if you watch it sometimes though, the parachutes will rip the device in half. Not sure what I can do about that, uh, but uh, for now we're just going to uh, enjoy ourselves getting up into space. So, once we hit about the 15 kilometer mark, we are going to start our uh, gravity turn even though we're already technically kind of started into the gravity turn. Um, McJeb always does this better than I can, but I shall try my best. Um, as we can see over here from the orbital information, our apoapsis is about 25, 26 kilometers, so we're starting to gain on that. Um, once that hits about 70 is when you want to uh, be completely uh, horizontal um, at 90, because um, then you're already out of the atmosphere and that's all that really matters. Um, it's getting out of the atmosphere and then pushing your apoapsis even further out. So, I like to be aggressive with my gravity turn. I don't think it's the most effective way to do it, but it's how I like to do it. And this rocket, as I said, has more than enough fuel to do anything you could possibly want of it, let alone requiring just merely enough fuel to get into orbit. So anyways, I'm going to just cut to once I'm actually about to go into uh, my next stage. Alright, fuel's about out, and I... Uh, screwed up my app apps just a little bit. I forgot to gravity turn because I was too busy talking. Turn SAS off right before the fuel runs out, otherwise your ship will go crazy. Don't know why. Stage, stage. So this disconnects that stage, disconnects that stage. Drop your throttle back down. You want to ease out of this thing. And kick your throttle off. These rockets, that one and this stage, are impossible to control with just the gyroscope. Um, RCS lets you control it a little bit, but due to the weight, it's still really impossible. That's why they all have these radial thrusters on them. Makes them much, much easier to control. So we're going to put our apoapsis out to about 300 kilometers or so, give or take. Kind of what I'm aiming for. And uh, then we're going to coast out to it. Shouldn't be too hard. This stage has a lot of power. Um, for just a standard 2 me meter stage. Um, it's really awkward looking though. I wish I could tighten it up, but uh, until they give me more powerful uh, radial thrusters, it kind of looks bulky because I have to put those engines on. But alright, so we're at 350 kilometers with our apoapsis. That's plenty. So we're going to warp out to it. Uh, the reason why I like to go past 240,000 kilometers is the 100 times warp, uh, which is really nice to have, especially when you want to go and switch to another orbit. So we're coming up on our apoapsis. Now we're going to stop a few seconds out and uh, turn Jeb to prograde. Um, you can do this by hand, but it takes just a while, so I usually let Jeb do it automatically for me. Um, I fly with Mechanical Jeb just because its information is very easy. The first iterations of this never used Mechanical Jeb because of the advanced SAS and such killing it in flight. Um, so this is completely flyable without it. It's just nice to have. I mean, look, we can see our time to apoapsis. Know that, okay, now's the time to start burning. And so we start burning. And we're going to push our periapsis 
out and then we're actually going to increase our apoapsis once the periapsis flips to about there 400 maybe let's put it at about 420 now the reason for this is once we re-reach our new periapsis we are going to retro burn um, this second stage back into the atmosphere um, that's what these gigantic reverse engines are for they're to basically kill its orbital velocity enough to put it back into the atmosphere um, these engines are powerful enough to pull it out of a 300k orbit um, 350 might be a little over, but I wanted to test it out. So we'll see exactly how much we do. So once we reach our periapsis, which we can see our time to because it's so convenient, we're going to disable the fuel tanks, the main ones. That way they don't flow. Return our rocket up to full power. Time to periapsis is coming up. Then we're going to engage the next stage and then decouple it once we pass uh, our apoapsis down to 350. So and I screwed it up a little bit. I screwed our periapsis up. But hey, it's not bad. That was pretty dang good. As you can see, that thing is rocketing itself off. And we will double check it. Okay, so its engine should be ceased fire. And we're going to double check to make sure that it is actually deorbiting properly. This has been the biggest problem with trying to get this thing to be a debris-less sky, is getting this second stage to deorbit. And beautiful! Look at that. A super deorbit. It's not even getting close. So. Uh, can I transfer back by double clicking? No, I don't know why. Oh well. So switching back, we know that our next stage is going to deorbit. It has parachutes, so don't worry, you will recover it. And now we're going to start our correction. Um, I like to be uh, very particular about this. We're okay past the uh, apoapsis, so we're not going to be able to get a perfect correction. Um, turn that off. Um, but we should be able to correct our periapsis just enough to get this a bit more circular. Um, it's kind of hard to nail. If, it'd be really nice if I could engage the engines directly in the decouple stage, but you can't. They won't fire. Alright, so that's as close as we can get. About 2k. Not shabby. Alright. So, now that we're out there, we're going to launch our first satellite out of this combo launcher. First satellite's right here. I like to disable SAS and spin. Uh, this is just for effect. This has no point. Alright, engage RCS. Get yourself away from it a little bit. Uh, then engage SAS to stop yourself from spinning to death. And there we are. We've launched our first satellite. And we are now going to get prepared to go to the moon. Um, this is not the most efficient way of doing this. If you want to make a uh, trip to both of the moons and get back to the planet, the most efficient way is and I think that destroyed itself because of the time warp oh well but if you were watching it at one time it would land um, but the most efficient way to do this is actually to go to minimus as I found out but I designed this thing to go to the moon first because I can but you can go to any planet um, this final stage uses the nuclear power engine which has amazing efficiency it's heavy as hell but if you get it into space it will pretty much take care of anything else that you want um, in this final stage, you can finally actually use the uh, gyroscope in the main capsule to actually maneuver around, which is very, very nice. Excuse me. Alright, so we're just barely seeing the moon. So, alright. I'm going to make a quick save. Oh, got to somehow turn, disable SAS. Quick save, because for some reason I've been screwing up my uh, mooner burns. I don't know why, but I have. So here we go. Oh, and gotta engage the engines. I have the engines not in the main thing because the thrusters, the satellite's there, and I don't want to burn the satellite out of orbit with the thrust of the engine on accident. So it's in a completely separate stage. So, anyways, now we're gonna try to move our Apple key up to. Uh, I keep switching between Apple key and Apple apsis. I think there's a technical difference, but I hear people constantly calling it different things. I don't know. But anyways, we're going to push this up and we're going to try to get into orbit around the MUN. Um, quick note, I do have a different version of the conic system, The uh, basically what predicts when you're going to intercept with another planet. Um, it's just based in the game, but it's not enabled by default, and so I uh, followed a Try Dying to Live's guide on how to switch between it, and I use the number three version, which predict that w it, what it does is it shows you your exact path in uh, in space during uh, 
body transitions. So if you're transitioning to a different sphere of influence, it shows you exactly where you're going to be in space rather than where you're going to be against the body of the planet. So here we are. As you can see, this is very odd. Um, so when we encounter the moon, we are actually going to be actually here rather than normally it would show you like the encounter and then it would show you this little guy and going out this way around the planet in a circle this instead shows me exactly how it's going to happen which is I'm going to encounter it here I'll meet the periapsis here while it's there and then I will exit here while it's over there and so we're going to push that a little closer and we're going to try to get around the back side because I like burning that way okay so we stopped uh, what's it called uh, gaining anything from uh, losing that and so we're going to warp ourselves out to it now turn it SAS off there's our satellite spinning in a nice pretty orbit the thing I really like about this is it lets you know exactly where you're going to return to Kerbal Sphere of Influence that's why I use it as you can see this is where I'll return to Kerbal Sphere of Influence with the normal one it'd be like have like a little dot over on this corner over here and then you fly back in it's just not any fun and uh, I just realized I don't know if you can see my mouse uh, one second okay so I did indeed uh, what's it called uh, have my mouse cursor shown but somehow I accidentally reloaded my uh, save so uh, okay so uh, I'm gonna re get back out to the uh, moon and uh, I'll see you then oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus ah oh. so close alright so we're cutting in here for the third time of killing myself on the planet um, I keep getting too greedy with uh, trying to uh, land um, uh, as I was saying, the advanced SAS on this ship um, makes it impossible to uh, control inside the atmosphere, and so you have to go without advanced SAS, um, otherwise you'll just die. There's really no way around it, unfortunately. Um, you just kind of have to go without advanced SAS. Um, you need the SAS module to uh, keep yourself from spinning due to uh, wobbly physics. And so uh, you literally have to go without the advanced SAS if you want to successfully do it. Um, McJeb gives you an advanced SAS that you don't have to, uh, what's it called, that you don't have to worry about. It is very nice. Um, the kill rotation feature of McJeb does exactly what advanced SAS does, but it also allows input to overwrite it so you can actually move around with it rather than constantly tapping T to toggle your SAS and then uh, move. Uh, it's just much more convenient, but really, I've landed without advanced SAS, with just SAS in this module. Um, it's just a lot harder. So, anyways, uh, ignore the sparkling thing over there. That's totally not an Easter egg. Um, uh, anyways, so we're gonna land. Um, I hope I did my burn correctly this time. Uh, I'm gonna engage my RCS thrusters to kill my velocity just a little bit more because I'm worried. Um, I've crashed twice already or three times um, by burning myself into the planet. Okay, I think I'm totally good. I'm going to save my RCS fuel. McJeb has a horrible habit of spinning RC RCS fuel terrifyingly bad. Alright, so we got, we got perfectly where we want to be. Alright, so uh, the ground's pretty close. I'm not going to cheat and use McJeb's thing, even though honestly it's not cheating because these things should have a true height elevation with uh, radars. They just tell you exactly how you are, how high you are off the surface. But whatever, we're not going to use it. Um, Got to switch to kill rotation. Uh, if you leave it on retrograde, it will make your rocket fly around and kill you. Um, so anyways, we're going to uh, speed our way into the ground. By speed our way into the ground, I mean hopefully not kill ourselves on the ground. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to get a little clearer. Well, maybe you can't see. It's rather hard to see. But as the ground gets a little clearer, that means it's getting close. Um, I know it's close because I've crashed into it already. <laughs> Alright, so we still have a little bit of horizontal velocity as you can see from the trackball, the uh, the uh, prograde or retrograde is still a little bit off. Okay, now it looks like we've killed most of that. Okay, okay, we are close. Um, now I'm just going to go vertical. I'm going to ignore the fact that I'm going to be gaining a little bit of a t t 
tilt direction. Okay, I'm going to try to land about one notch of power on this is enough to just let the gravity overcome you. Two notches can slow your descent just by a fraction. So you alternate between one and two uh, notches and soft landing. Please don't blow up. Ugh. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs>